welcome to 2021 here in the Auspex Gaming Painting Room, other known as the Salt King's Basement. Um, lots of questions uh, on some of our most recent videos about where we've been. To be honest, COVID-19, that's where we've been. Uh, the province that we live in here in Canada, Alberta, has been under like a, almost a month uh, significant lockdown. A lockdown so much that we're not allowed to have anyone outside of our like immediate family in our house. That makes filming very difficult. That's where we've been. Before that, uh, unfortunately myself, I had to work almost all of November up on site. I don't work uh, in the town I, uh, I live in. I have, to, I have to go up to the frozen north tundra here in Canada. Um, and I work out on an oil and gas site. So that's, that's where I've been. Uh, Ken and Mike have been busy away doing some painting. I just saw some pictures yesterday. Ken, Silent King, looking sick. Uh, Mike's been working on Gene Steeler Call and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, so since we can't really play a battle report, uh, well, we can, fam hammer, right? Uh, but uh, things have been busy around here. Christmas, the holidays, like I said, I was working, uh, the lockdowns. So we've been doing a lot of building, a lot of modeling, remodeling here in the painting room and uh, started a couple new armies to try to get some diversity on the channel. So instead of uh, a battle report today, I'm gonna take you around my painting room uh, and where we film, and I'm actually gonna show you my entire Warhammer 40K um, collection. There's a lot of great plastic because I like to build them not so quick of a painter, so it tends to tends to become a backlog pretty quick. Let's go check it out. So you will have to excuse some of the uh, sounds. Unfortunately, all the pipes and everything kind of run through here. Uh, but this is my painting room. Uh, let's take a look. Yes, that is some blood angels getting painted. I've been working on some, uh, some death company and some sanguinary guard. And uh, this is kind of where the magic happens. I've got all my, my paint set up. Uh, these organizers are, are heaven sent, right? So just like got my drawers and everything set up with all the paints and and stuff that uh, you need for, for the hobby. Uh, got a couple airbrushes over there and bits upon bits upon bits. For the most part, all labeled. So what I used to do is I used to just build the models uh, when I first got into the hobby. And I used to throw out everything left on the sprue. As an experienced hobby or knows, you never throw out what's left on the sprue. You never know when you're going to need them. So I've got everything from extra bases, from resin bases. Uh, there's three Primarchs hiding in there. There's some pretty exciting stuff. Uh, and then, of course, Ninja Turtles. Because if you were born in the late 80s like me, there's only one set of action figures that you need to have. And that is the Ninja Turtles. Um, so this is kind of where I do all my airbrushing. And then over on this side, you can see from uh, the spilling, uh, this is where I tend to do some of the modeling and uh, additional painting. So there is two chairs here, uh, one for the Salt King, obviously the crown, and the Salt Queen, when she comes down to hang out, that's where, that's where she hangs out. Over here is all of the books that we have for the channel. So kind of all of the current DEXs, and then we've got some rule books, and then down here is just kind of all of the uh, out-of-date codexes. Um, I really love this special edition Dark Angels codex, but I'll be honest, at the rate that they pump out codexes, I'm probably never gonna buy one of those again for 200 bucks. Unfortunately, I only got to use it for like seven months, and then they pumped out some new codexes. Alrighty, over here is just kind of where we keep a lot of the bigger terrain that won't fit in the containers. And there's some other pieces that have been uh, worked on. Over here is my current pile of shame. There's some few little hints of things that are coming. Not going to say what it is. Uh, if you can read, you'll see those hints. Uh, down here is kind of where I keep all my sprays. And got to do it quickly. Here's some of the projects that we're working on. All right, so there's that. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever gotten these, but uh, the girlfriend got me these. Oh no, there's too much extra stuff in there. Uh, but these Dark Angel Forge Roll dice. That's a six, baby. Pretty fantastic. So this is just the painting area. 
and storage. Um, you guys wanna go see the models? All right, let's see the models. Where to begin, where to begin. How about we start with my epic Dark Angel, mostly primed and a lot of gray plastic army. So guys, this is my entire collection of Dark Angels. Yes, the Sons of the Lion. And when I say entire, I mean there's some stuff in the painting room getting painted right now in some project boxes, but this is it. So as you can see, we have a ton of Predators and uh, <laughs> Whirlwinds, Razorbacks, Vindicators. We got four Land Raiders. We've got all of the Dreadnoughts over here hanging out, just having a good time. You've seen most of these guys. Uh, we've got one Impulsor that's built, one that's primed. We've got four Repulsors, one Executioner. We've got my Primaris up on this shelf here for the most part. Uh, you've got everything from Assault Intercessors to Infiltrators to Hellblasters. Uh, basically everything that you see here. Uh, and then Reavers over here. I don't know why the Reavers. Don't really use them. Down here, we've got all of my Devastators in various forms of painted. <laughs> uh, we've got some uh, Terminators. This is all Terminators. I think there's like 150 of them. All of the Flyers for the Ravenwing. And then all of my Ravenwing bikes and speeders. There's a lot. There's a lot of them. And believe it, a lot of the stuff I got for next to nothing or for trades. So I was able to really, really to build it up. And then for those of you who love mini Marines, look at all of them. Look at all those mini Marines. That's a lot. That's a lot of mini Marines. Alrighty, moving on. We've seen these guys on the channel quite a bit. My custodies in various uh, stages of being painted. So we've got uh, three, uh, palace assault tanks, and then obviously the big boys, the transport, all the dreads, uh, the not Orion, yeah, the Orion, uh, tons of bikes, and then my boys, my foot slogging boys. Uh, next, them is something you haven't seen on the channel yet, uh, and that is my gray knights. You've seen Mike's, but my gray knights are very much done in like kind of a dark gunmetal. Um, everyone kind of goes light silver, so I decided to go dark silver. Beside them is what I have uh, not currently getting worked on in the other room for my Imperial Fists. You'll see that this was my 30k army to begin with, and then I've started moving in towards more of the 40k. Sorry guys, this isn't the best lighting down here. Uh, 40k and uh, Primaris. So there, there's quite a bit getting worked on. Yellow is so difficult to paint to make sure it looks good. Uh, so actually that doesn't look bad. That was airbrushed with the contrast paint um, just as a base layer, just to see. Um, I like it, I like it. That's not bad. Hey, Madden? Mm -hmm. That looks good. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a, a gladiator down there waiting to get some paint. And then of course I was bored one day and I'm like, hey, I want a Primarch, who doesn't? So I have some Ultramarines and Magnus, or Magnus, Marinus Calgar. Up here on the shelf is my Death Watch. And they're just kind of hanging out. I don't really know how I feel about them yet. So they're just gonna sit there and collect dust. Um, and then, boys, the Knights. Yes, that is a Warhound. Uh, these yellow guys here, are probably my favorite ones that I've painted of the Knights. And uh, you've seen them on the channel once before. Just gotta finish like putting the decals and stuff on. Um, see, when it comes to the hobby guys, I'm a huge fan of building. Not so much a big fan of the, the painting aspect of it. I do enjoy it. I just, I think because I'm just not the best or the quickest painter, I get discouraged, which happens, um, but yeah. So we've got some, some knights back there, some primer on them. And then back here, we've got a couple of Bane blades. I don't know if you can really see it, but they're back there. Uh, my big boy, love that guy. Does so much work, but so many points. So this is my entire collection of 40K.
a lot and a lot and a lot of Dark Angels. Um, I do have some very small spots left for, for some upcoming projects, as you kind of have seen. Uh, but guys, this, this is my army. This is my, this is my passion. This is 10 years uh, of being in the hobby. And uh, yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll sit down in the other room and we'll just kind of talk about how I came into the hobby. We'll see you real soon. Before we do that, I guess I should show you where, uh, where the Emperor sent me down to film the new battle reports. This is, uh, this is where we film. I put uh, some curtains up along just to, just to cover up these walls down here. So this is the unfinished fourth level of the house. Yeah. And uh, it's my son's hockey room. Ew. So us being Canadians, what else can we do but shoot some pucks? So Madden, why not? Oh, come on, that's a save. Woo! Lighten some bullets. So from the hobby room, back to the painting room, we'll see you guys. So back for the conclusion of the video here in the painting room. Um, and like I said, since we haven't been uh, able to film a whole bunch of battle reports, I'm going to give you a little background on, on myself and, and, and my history with, with gaming. So I grew up in London, Ontario, Canada, and great, great city. If anyone from Ontario's uh, watching the video, hey, message down below. Let us know where you're from. And from anywhere, actually. Let's, let's, let's see where everyone's from. If you made it this far in the video, uh, you know, hopefully you can interact with us a little bit. So I started this hobby about 10 years ago, but it's been in my life basically all the way through as far back as I can really remember. Uh, I lived in Ontario and uh, <laughs> we used to walk with uh, my brother's friend to the local hobby shop. And, you know, usually summertime because snow in the winter um, and summertime we'd go down to the hobby shop and his older brother was collecting ultramarines. Like I remember, I remember like vintage Land Raiders and and uh, Terminators on on his like dresser at his house, and I must have been ten, nine, ten years old, and we'd walk, which felt like forever, down to this hobby shop. I'm sure it was like five blocks, like really, like but you're a kid, right? So you only think of like these things being like massive. So I uh, I remember going to the hobby store, and I remember thinking, wow, this is this is some cool stuff. And uh, Gretchen always caught my eye. I don't know why. Probably because they're just like tiny little space dorks. Um, not orcs, dorks. Um, and I remember always looking at them and being like, wow, that stuff's really cool. Until I saw the price. <laughs> and for a nine-year-old kid, definitely not. You know, my allowance wasn't buying me 40K at all. Uh, so you just kind of forget about the hobby. But you remember those things, right? So... What ended up happening is we moved out to Alberta and one, there's some beeping coming from somewhere. Um, once we got to Alberta, I met two really cool dudes named Steve and Brian, and this was probably grade seven now. So gave it about two years. And uh, there's a local store called Comic Readers or Readers. And they had a space brain section. And at this point, I was babysitting and, and just kind of working what I could, right? Because I wasn't old enough to, to fully work at this point. And uh, babysitting and doing chores and stuff. And we bought it. We, uh, we split a box of uh, uh, Space Marine bikes. And we built them all together. And uh, they ended up painting theirs. I didn't. Of course, you've seen my stack of great plastic. And then just kind of forgot about the hobby. I was off playing hockey and I was off playing football. Uh, very fortunate that those uh, those two sports were able to take me some places um, and give me great experiences. So how did I get back into the hobby? So we've seen about it before. Uh, my first, I guess my first 10 years in the world, I got experience to it. Uh, my second was in junior high and just kind of forgot about it until uh, I went to work down in Denver, Colorado for at the time, the gentleman was my uncle-in-law for his company. And ironically enough, um, Mini Wargaming Dan, the big orc, orcs, ah, if you remember that, he was down there working with us at the company. 
and uh, just two Canadian kids down there in the States working with a bunch of uh, amazing guys from all over the United States and, and some more Canadians, but for the most part, they're Americans. So us Canadians, we kind of stuck together. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was telling me about this site years ago before Mini Wargaming became huge, Mini Wargaming, and we looked it up. And this was probably 2000 and, oh geez, this would have been 2010. So I guess 11 years, not full yet, but uh, this would have been 2010. And uh, we went to the local hobby stop store down in Denver, well, Aurora, right outside Denver. And uh, we grabbed a, uh, <laughs> was it Black Reach, I think? It must have been Black Reach. We, and he built the Orcs and I built the Space Marines while we were down there working in, in Denver. And it was fun, it was, it was really good fun. And I, uh, I started uh, enjoying the hobby again. So fast forward a couple months, we finished our work down in Denver, just because we could only work for the summer as uh, summer students. And uh, then I started working for an oil and gas reclamation company uh, based out of Edmonton. And uh, that caused me to work away from, at the time, my wife and my two kids, and you've seen how big they've gotten. Uh, and I had to work away. So while I was working away, I needed something to do. So I started building models and, and painting models, uh, sitting in, uh, you know, whether it was hotels in Hinton or they, uh, the, uh, the company had a, an apartment in Edmonton or, you know, just hanging out in the apartment, sitting and painting. Like, what else am I going to do when I'm not working? Watch TV and paint some models. So that's what I did. I got into Supernatural at that point. I watched a lot of Supernatural uh, and painted models. Fast forward a bunch of years. Uh, I met this awesome, well, I guess about a year, I met this awesome guy, TJ, who worked at the Games Workshop in West Edmonton Mall. Fantastic guy. And uh, he kind of sparked some more interest. You know, he ta taught me some painting techniques. Because, I, like I said, I've never really been interested in the painting. Um, I guess maybe because I'm a little intimidated by it, to be honest. It's, it's you're kind of creating something, you want it to look like how it does in the box, or you have a certain image of, of how it looks. And... Uh, Sometimes it just doesn't turn out that way. And being an athlete all my life, you know, I've just, I've always been able to throw baseball. Always. I've always been able to throw football, uh, skates, very light on my feet. I can shoot a hockey puck real good. <laughs> um, but the the artistic stuff is kind of difficult for me. Uh, and I'm doing the best I can. I understand some guys in the comments are, have been, you know, paint your models better or quicker or whatever. And it's just doing the best you can, to be honest, guys. Um, you know, for the longest time as a single dad until Alex came into my life. And, uh, you know, gymnastics, cheerleading, uh, figure skating, hockey, um, baseball, those will all take precedent over your hobby, your hobby in regards to the kids. Uh, so I, I, <laughs> it's a long way to go is, uh, uh, he showed me some painting techniques and, uh, what ended up happening is, uh, I started painting more and I started getting more into that. And I started buying more models. Before it was just like just a just a pack to keep me busy. And I remember the first pack I ever bought from like on my own up in Edmonton while I was just killing time was Sanguinary Guard. I like the idea of the angels. And ironically enough, you've seen me with the Dark Angels being the vast majority of of, of uh, my uh, purchases. But uh, Blood Angels were my first love. Fast forward. Uh, <laughs> we're actually moving back to to my hometown uh we're fortunate enough that i got a position with a with a municipality down here doing health and safety and uh we met this amazing shop owner uh named roy kim now those of you who live in the edmonton area if you're watching or or honestly anywhere roy kim with thunderground comics and collectibles is the guy not only is he an exceptional human being, he is the guy when it comes to, to customer satisfaction. I cannot stress enough how good Roy has been to this channel, uh, to me as an individual, to my kids when we go and visit uh, Edmonton and check out his store, um, to Alex, the, it was just unbelievable. Roy, you if you're seeing this, we cannot say it enough how much we appreciate you and your help. So if you're in uh, Edmonton, St. Albert, any of that area, Roy Kim at Thunderground Comics and Collectibles. 
uh, in St. Albert. He's your guy. Go there, support local businesses. We also have a local shop here. Um, the gentleman who runs it is awesome. He really supports the channel as well. Uh, he ensures that we get a little a little deal every once in a while. And uh, so for, for comic readers, we really appreciate your support as well. Um, so I meet Roy and I, and I buy a ton of models from him because I'm moving and I didn't know if comic readers was still open back at, back at home. Uh, so we buy a bunch of models and we start playing and at this point start uh, building and painting. Um, eventually I found out when 40k night was here in town and I ended up meeting like Kyle and Adam who you haven't seen on the channel yet but he's an ultramarine or not an ultramarine uh, a waste cars player here in town um, that actually lives away but also comes back and plays and he plays predominantly fantasy from what I've heard of him lately and we met Liz and John which is Mike's brother so Mike who's one of the con uh, contributors to the channel I met John and John and I really kicked it off and at this time ironically enough I just moved back from Edmonton Mike was living in Edmonton working up there so fortunately, Mike got to come back and I got to meet him and we were playing games and we always really kicked it off. It was awesome. We always had a great time. So fast forward a few more years, uh, I guess like one or two years, uh, we decided that we want to make a YouTube channel. Now this, <laughs> this was very, very early in the thought process of Auspex Gaming. And uh, we said we want to make a YouTube channel. We're like we see these battle reports, we can do that. But neither of us were really painting our models. So we filmed a bunch of stuff. I got to see if I could find it on the old cameras <laughs> and uh, never did anything with it. I think the editing and stuff just kind of got in the way. Um, but we we had that idea. And then for years off and on, been collecting the hobby. Uh, Mike and I ran into a gentleman who, <laughs> well, I guess it was myself and I introduced Mike. Uh, I saw this car. I want to tell you about how we got all of these models because Mike's collection trumps mine. Um, Mike, well, I saw this car at the mall and inside of this car, I don't know how I saw it, but I did. It was full. The car, guys, was full of Games Workshop. And the vast majority of the back of this car that you could see was, was Bane Blades and Shadow Swords and Orc Stompas and like crazy amount of stuff. So you know me, I'm thinking, hey, maybe this guy is like a, a sales guy. Maybe this guy has like an online store. So I sit around in the parking lot. Uh, I have my two kids in the van and my wife at the time. And um, we're sitting there for like an hour waiting for this person to come out of the mall. They don't, they don't come out of the mall. But I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna leave a note on the vehicle. So I write out, hey, if you're interested in selling any of this stuff, I'll gladly come by and buy some and I and I leave my number and my name I don't hear from them and I tell Mike about this and I tell John and I'm like guys you would never believe this and they're like no 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 and I'm like you will never believe this they didn't they didn't believe it uh, but anyways uh, there was a, a post on Kijiji basically a guy trying to sell some 40k so I make a phone call and I say hey I'm interested in looking at what you've got for sale and that's where we meet Sean and Sean had the most 40k I've ever seen in my life. I have not seen stores that had as much 40k as this guy. An entire like 20 by 20 foot garage full. And when I say full, guys, I mean roof, or sorry, ground to rafters full. Shelves covered full. And uh, not sure how he came into the ability to purchase that nor do I really care at this point um, so <laughs> I said to him what is your plan with all this 40k and he was gonna build a big giant diorama and I said well how much can I buy he's like how much are you willing to buy and I looked at him and I talked to Mike and John afterwards and I and I, I said all of it I want to buy all of it so John myself and Michael began to purchase it from him. And he uh, he wanted to get rid of all of it. He wanted to purge all of it. So we did, we bought it, we bought all of it. And we started selling it online just to get rid of the stuff we didn't want. So like the vast majority of my collection came from this man's garage and we bought all of it. Like Mike's uh, guard army that I sold him, 
like I got from this guy. There's so many Lehman Russ tanks in there. I got a full tank company. John got a full tank company. We sold a bunch to like Kyle and some of the other guys. Like it was just crazy. Uh, so we got that. So now we really want to start making battle reports because I'm building, I have a giant tower army. I have a giant space wolves army. I have a giant guard army. I've got giant blood angel army, got giant dark angel army, all because of this house. Um, and then something crazy happens in my life. And you referred to me as my previous wife or my, uh, my ex-wife throughout the thing is a divorce happened. And I ended up selling some of my armies to help pay for that. Now, it was no skin off my back because the armies that I had, I got for basically nothing. Like, I'm telling you, we're, we're buying dollars, like paying dollars for a Lehman Russ tank at the time, which would have been like $50 Canadian. We paid five bucks a tank. That's how, like, that's the amount we got for the amount we paid. Um, so I ended up selling off my armies to just help cover some of the bills. Uh, that were were new in, in the life. Fast forward a couple more years, and you can come on in. It's okay. My son decided to come and join us, guys. Come on for story time, Adam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what ends up happening is I keep building the armies, and Mike and I keep talking, and we start doing more painting, investing in things like airbrushes, and I let my insecurities about like the modeling side of things go to the wayside. And I start painting and I get a little bit better and a little bit better. I don't think I'm very good. I think I'm all right. Yeah. I'm all right. Hey, we've, we've seen some pretty cool tutorials online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we started Auspex Gaming, Mike and I, and then we've been able to connect recently, as you've seen more and more with Ken and Ken was actually a friend of mine in junior high. We played on the same football team. Um, how crazy is that? Right? So you, you meet somebody 20 years ago and you're like, Hey, 20 years from now, we're gonna be friends. Yeah. So that's my 40K story up until now where I am. So now I've got a, uh, a son who likes to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a daughter who likes the models when they're painted purple and or pink. <laughs> that's safe. <laughs> yeah. She also likes rolling the dice. Yeah. Uh, I've got a fantastic girlfriend who has really dove in and uh, Let's see here. Can I can I sneak something? Here's some of her works in progress right here. I don't know how good the camera will pick it up, but yes, that is a thousand suns. Yes, I dated somebody who's a chaos loyalist. I'm dating somebody who's a chaos loyalist. Can you believe that? No, but all the girls in this house are chaos. So. Yeah, my daughter as well. Like, they're like caffeine and chaos. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's what gets them going. Um, but yeah, that's that's the 40k journey to where I am, and I know I kind of spidered off on a, on a few different things, but I've been fortunate enough that um, the the girlfriend, the amazing Alex, the Empress herself, okay, yeah. um, really supports the hobby and really supports me taking time away to go and paint at night once the kids go to bed, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's gone to the store and grabbed models for me that I was talking about getting. Like, how amazing what what a keeper how lucky am I yeah right so that is where we're at uh, so how about we end it with a little Q&A okay. in the comments below ask questions if you want me to answer them or, or Mike or, or John or not John John Ken. I say John all the time but Ken and um, maybe we can we can start a dialogue uh, if you haven't checked out our Facebook page, make sure you do. And uh, yeah, what are you working on? I've got the Blood Angels going. Mm -hmm. You can see my list. It, it's going to be different for the channel. It's going to be something very uh, unique. I, I play a lot of a lot of Primaris. This army is not going to be as much Primaris. Uh, it's going to be a lot of foot soldiers, a lot of jump packs, a lot of quick, a lot of fast. Oh, so, news yeah, to me. News to him, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's it for me here in my gaming painting room, my dungeon, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, so this is Joel with Auspex Gaming. If you've made it this far through the video, I really appreciate you. I appreciate uh, everything that you guys have been able to, to do to help grow this channel. 2021 is going to be a, a banner year, maybe. Yeah. A banner year. Uh, hopefully he gets back to hockey soon and uh, we can get back to our lives. 
So for those of you who are still in lockdown, stay safe. Those of you who are out enjoying your life in areas where they've been able to uh, shut down the virus, you know, keep doing what you're doing because it, it, it's helping everyone. Uh, so I can't wait to get my life back once lockdown is over and Same. hopefully get some battle reports going. Thanks yeah. guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. And this is the Salt King, Joel. And we'll see you guys later. Salt. <laughs> a pinch of salt. A pinch of salt.